Welcome to Biology at Ease. In this video, I'll be explaining translation in eukaryotes. Before starting with this topic, I suggest you to watch my previous video, which was on translation in prokaryotes. Then it will be easy for you to understand this topic. So let's start with eukaryotic translation. Translation refers to the synthesis of a polypeptide or a chain of amino acids from an mRNA with the help of ribosomes. The ribosome involved in eukaryotic translation is a 80S type ribosome consisting of a larger 60S subunit and a smaller 40S subunit. The 40S subunit of ribosome with the help of initiation factor known as EIF1, eukaryotic initiation factor 1 and EIF3 is recruited to initiate a tRNA containing methionine. Now, this complete structure gets attached to a cap structure present at the 5' prime end of the mRNA. After the attachment of this structure to the cap region of mRNA, the complex formed is known as 43S pre-initiation complex and this complex moves in the 3' prime direction of the mRNA to scan for the AUG initiator codon so that it can synthesize the polypeptide chain. This mode of initiation of translation is known as cap dependent initiation of translation since cap region is involved in the initiation process. There is one more method by which the initiator tRNA along with the 40S subunit of ribosome initiates the process of translation and that method is known as cap independent mode of initiation of translation. In this method, the entire structure containing the initiator tRNA along with the 40S subunit attaches to a region present in the mRNA known as IRES which stands for internal ribosome entry site. So this structure gets attached to the IRES and then initiates the translation process. So there are two methods of initiation of translation in eukaryotes. One is cap dependent initiation in which the initiator tRNA attached to the 40A subunit of ribosome gets attached to the cap region present at the 5' prime end of mRNA. So this is cap dependent initiation. In cap independent initiation, this entire structure instead of getting attached to the cap region gets attached to the IRES that is internal ribosome entry site present in the mRNA and then initiate the process of translation. After this attachment to either the cap region or the IRES, the entire structure that is the 43S pre-initiation complex start moving in the 5' prime direction. It crosses a region present in the mRNA known as untranslated region. After the untranslated region that is the UTRs, there is a sequence present in the mRNA which is known as COSAC sequence or COSAC consensus sequence which contains the initiation codon that is AUG. So this structure that is the 43S pre-initiation complex move towards the 3' prime direction of mRNA and reaches the COSAC sequence and gets attached to the AUG that is initiation codon and then start the elongation process in which a polypeptide chain is synthesized. So let's see how a polypeptide chain is synthesized after the attachment of the 43S pre-initiation complex to the initiation codon that is AUG. After the attachment of the initiation tRNA along with the 40S subunit to the initiation codon AUG, the 60S subunit of ribosome gets attached to the entire complex. After the attachment of 60S subunit, all the initiation factors gets removed from the complex. A ribosome consists of three sites. A site which is the site for the entry of new tRNA containing an amino acid. P site which contains the tRNA carrying the growing polypeptide chain and E site through which a tRNA molecule after the delivery of amino acid exits the ribosome. So a tRNA molecule containing an amino acid enters the ribosome through the A site and if the codon present in the tRNA molecule matches against the codon of mRNA then this tRNA molecule is accepted in the ribosomal unit otherwise it gets rejected. So this tRNA molecule contains the codon triple A which matches against the mRNA codon triple U. So this tRNA molecule is accepted in the ribosomal unit. After the attachment of this charged tRNA to the mRNA, a peptide bond is formed between the two amino acids present on the different tRNA molecules. 
Now, this peptide bond formation is followed by the transfer of amino acid from the initiator tRNA present at the P side to the tRNA present at the A side. And at the same time, the ribosome moves one triplet forward in the mRNA such that the initiator tRNA which was earlier present at the P side now moves to the E side and ready to exit the ribosomal unit and the A side tRNA moves to the P side and this A site is now again empty and ready to accept new charged tRNA molecule. So this is your new charged tRNA molecule containing an amino acid. It enters the A site of the ribosome and again a peptide bond is formed between the amino acid of this tRNA molecule and the previous amino acids. Now the tRNA present at the P site transfers its amino acids to the tRNA of the A site. Now the ribosome again shifts one triplet forward such that this P site tRNA exits the ribosome through E site and the tRNA present at the A site occupies the P site of the ribosome. So what happens is this is your ribosome containing the three different sites A site, P site and E site. Initially the two tRNAs are present at the A and P site of the ribosome. After the peptide bond formation between the tRNAs present at A and P site, the ribosome shifts one triplet forward. So now the A site of the ribosome is unoccupied and the tRNA which was initially present on the P site occupies the A site of the ribosome whereas the tRNA which was present on the A site is now at the P site of the ribosome. So A site is now ready to accept another tRNA molecule and the cycle goes on till this ribosome reaches is the termination codon of mRNA. So it is the P site of the ribosome which contains the growing polypeptide chain and A site is ready to accept tRNA molecules and the tRNA after the delivery of A sites exits the ribosome through the E site. Once the ribosome reaches the termination codon present in the mRNA, no amino acids binds to this termination codon. Instead, a factor known as releasing factor binds to the mRNA sequence and and this whole complex gets dissociated and now the 60s and 40s subunits of ribosome are again ready to initiate another cycle of translation and this is how a polypeptide chain is formed from mRNA with the help of ribosome. So let's revise the steps. Eukaryotic translation is carried out by 80s ribosomes consisting of two subunits the larger 60s subunit and a smaller 40s subunit. The 40s subunit of ribosome attaches to the initiator tRNA molecule containing an amino acid. This complex then gets attached to the cap region present in the mRNA or to the IRES that is internal ribosome entry site and initiates the process of translation. Once this complex reaches the initiation codon present in the mRNA called AUG, the tRNA molecule delivers the amino acid in the mRNA and leaves the complex and the cycle goes on till the ribosome containing the growing polypeptide chain reaches the 3 prime end of mRNA. Once the ribosome reaches the 3 prime end containing the stop codon, no tRNA molecule binds to this codon. Instead, releasing factor gets attached to the mRNA which led to the dissociation of the entire complex from mRNA and the ribosome are now ready to initiate another cycle of translation and this is how a polypeptide chain is formed from an mRNA molecule with the help of ribosomes. So this is all about translation in eukaryotes. I hope you are clear with the content. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos. Thank you so much much for watching.